<clears throat> hey, what's up everybody? Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today I've got the Eclipse 2.0 Crave, I believe this is. And I also have a Neutron Crave here. We've got the new Disc Golf Deals USA uh, Bridge to Nowhere stamp exclusive. They sent me these out to do a video with. So yeah, shout out to them for sending these. I'm excited to see how these fly. I haven't thrown a Crave in at least like six to eight months. Ace with my first throw. Oh, so close. All right, so I guess the Crave is still fire. Oh, that one's definitely a hair more stable. All right, so that's gonna be a good start. The Glow one seems a bit more stable than the Neutron. Let's get after it. So we'll take a quick look at the side profiles of these guys. They look pretty much the exact same across the board. So if anybody knows why the Glow tends to be more stable than most other plastics, I'd be really interested to hear and understand why. So if you do know, let me know in the comments section down below. But across the board, these are the same flatness, the same wing shape, pretty much absolutely identical across the board. But the glow always seems to be a little bit more stable. We'll throw the neutron first and then the glow. Got a 500 foot hole here on hole two. And this hole is probably a bit too far for me to get there with the Crave, but we will try to forehand the stable one. See if we can get a little closer. Yeah, that one's very stable. The Neutron one on that line would have flipped up a lot. I'm actually very curious why the Glow is so much beefier than the Neutron. And I'm super curious and I really wanna know what MVP discs are you guys currently bagging at the moment? Swing. All right, hole five, 280, slightly downhill. Neutron, then glow. Is that my ace? Drop. Oh, it's very close. I love the crave. Oh, that's so good. Wowie. And I do believe with this Bridge to Gnomeware stamp, you can also get them on Prism Pyros, I believe it was, um, Eclipse, Resistors, Glitches, and Hexes. Some of the molds have sold out, but I know for a fact they still have the Craves and a couple other those molds that I mentioned. And this is art done by a local Charlotte guy. So it's kind of cool when a local guy makes it to the big leagues and gets his own personal stamp on an MVP disc. So it's pretty cool to support a local guy. So anyway, yeah, I think the stamp's really cool. And they're on some really good molds that aren't always easy to find because MVP stuff is selling out so fast these days. Hole six is an absolute beauty for the Craves. This Glow one's gonna require a little bit more flex than I'm comfortable with, I think, but we're gonna go for it. Let's go Glow first on this one. Oh yeah. I just got the tree kick of my life. It's in the circle, not a bad pull, and the neutron. And you can really see how different uh, the stability is. It's actually insane how much more beefy the glow is than the neutron. And there was a while there where I actually had three craves in the bag. I had a flippy proton one, I had a glow one, and I had a cosmic neutron all in the bag at the same time. And I love the Crave that one of the things that not a lot of discs in my bag have is I throw them backhand as well as forehand. The Crave is one of the few discs that I feel super comfortable throwing on both sides of the game. And when you have a disc that that's versatile, it's hard not to want it in your bag. And that was a great opportunity to show more the stable flex line with the Glow one, then more of the a little bit higher, a little more nose up sort of stand up hyzer with the flippier one. The Crave is one of those discs you can bag multiples of in different plastics because they do fly slightly different. Um, even when they're both brand new, flying very different out of the box. You can have the flippy option, you can have the stable option, and then you can just sort of have the neutral do it all option as well. Really great disc to have multiples in the bag. Hole 8A, it's gonna be a great opportunity to flex the more stable one. Needs a little bit of height, a little bit of Anheuser, and you can 
really see how versatile this disc is on any line. And that should be pretty darn close. The neutron one being a little more straight. We can't quite flex it as hard, so we can just go more flat straight through the gap. And that should be double park jobs. Craves are flying really nice today. Well, that's Crave 1. Boom, absolutely parked. And if that wasn't good enough, we got boom, Crave number 2, also parked. The Crave may just have to go back into the main bag. They seem to be flying a little bit too money to uh, leave them behind. Hole AB is probably a little bit too far for me with the Crave, but we'll try and blast a forehand up there. This is going to be our last hole for the video. Yeah, see the Neutron? Just a hair too flippy. I do like the glow one for the forehand lines a bit more. So much more stable. It's actually going to be like circle two with a decent little birdie putt. Not terrible. Well, I'm actually surprised. As I said before, it's been about six months since I have thrown the Crave. And just coming out here and throwing nine holes with it here at Bradford Disc Golf Course, I don't really know why I ever took it out of the bag. I think I must have lost them because I don't think I have those old craves that I had anymore. One of these two is definitely going to go in the bag, but I really want to know which one do you guys think I should bag? Should I bag the Neutron or the Beefy Glow one? Which one do you guys think was flying better for me today? I really want to know. Let me know in the comments section down below. Anyway, live with gratitude. Be kind. I'll see you guys in the next video and take care.